On January 7th, Defense Romania revealed a strategic move that has been long awaited but is also filled with massive questions regarding the future of air defense on NATO's eastern flank. Romania has explicitly included the Airbus H225M Caracal and H175 helicopters in the programs eligible for financing under the European SAFE mechanism. This decision is not merely a routine military inventory update. It is a 1 billion euro gamble that fundamentally alters the direction of Bucharest's defense industrial policy, while simultaneously marking the end of a long debate regarding the fate of the country's helicopter fleet, which is currently teetering on the brink of an operational crisis. The SAFE document specifically locks in the names H225M and H175, a level of precision that is rare in early planning stages, indicating that the platform choice is essentially final, even though formal negotiations with Airbus are targeted to conclude only by this coming May. However, behind that 1 billion euro figure lies a bitter reality about the unpreparedness of local industry and a military urgency that can no longer be compromised. This step is being taken amidst immense pressure faced by the Romanian Air Force which for the past several decades has been forced to rely on an IAR-330 Puma fleet that is ancient. These aircraft, produced locally under license decades ago, are now approaching the absolute limits of their operational lifespan, making fleet replacement no longer a matter of modernization or capability enhancement, but a matter of sustaining basic availability for transport and search and rescue missions. The financial allocation of roughly 1 billion euros within this safe mechanism while sounding massive, is in reality just a starting point and is insufficient to cover Romania's total requirement, which is estimated to reach 90 new units. This gap between available funds and real needs underscores that the decision to accept European financing is an emergency measure to prevent the loss of air combat capability, rather than a comprehensive solution that solves everything in a single contract. The core of this narrative actually centers on a sharp conflict between the political desire to empower domestic industry and the brutal military need for performance in the field. Previously, Airbus had offered the H215M variant with the lure of a full production license in Romania, an offer that was incredibly tempting for the economic sector and the IAR Brasov factory, which has cooperated with Airbus since 2016. Politically, accepting the H215M was a popular move because it would create jobs and technology transfer, but the Romanian armed forces firmly rejected that offer. For the military, the H215M was considered technology of the past that is no longer relevant for facing modern threats in Eastern Europe, while their preference fell absolutely on the H225M Caracal, a platform that is far superior but was not offered with a local production license by Airbus. Radu Miruta, who served as Minister of Defense after previously being in the Ministry of Economy, openly acknowledged this structural dilemma last autumn. He emphasized that the government cannot and should not force the military to accept a helicopter they do not want, even if that helicopter comes with a domestic assembly plant, because in national defense, operational necessity must always take precedence over industrial interests. This statement is key to understanding why, in the latest SAFE list, Romania finally yielded to reality and chose the H225M, even though it means they may have to sacrifice much of the local industrial cooperation potential that had been touted for so long, leaving a major question as to whether the role of local industry will now be limited merely to maintenance and logistical support. If we dissect the technical aspects deeper, the military's rejection of the H215M and their obsession with the H225M Caracal becomes entirely logical. The H225M is the peak evolution of the Super Puma family, a heavy-class twin-engine helicopter with a maximum takeoff weight above 11 tons, far exceeding the capabilities of the IAR-330 or the H215M. Its propulsion comes from two Safran Makilla 2A1 turboshaft engines, each delivering significantly higher power output compared to previous variants, providing a power margin that is critical for operations in hot conditions, high altitudes, or extreme maritime situations. For a military operating in a region with diverse topography like Romania, this power advantage translates into a larger troop-carrying capacity often described as capable of carrying nearly 30 fully equipped soldiers, 
something impossible for older platforms to achieve without sacrificing range or safety. This technical superiority is further reinforced by a five-blade rotor blade design using a Spheriflex modular hub, an engineering innovation designed to drastically reduce vibration levels, which is a factor that is crucial for reducing crew fatigue and structural stress during long-duration missions. From an avionics perspective, the H225M has completely abandoned the analog cockpit in favor of a modern glass cockpit with four large multifunction displays and a four-axis automatic flight control system, which allows pilots to execute precise maneuvers even in extremely poor visibility or degraded visual environments. These features are not mere luxuries, they are fundamental requirements for special operations, combat medical evacuation, and night searches, capabilities that are severely lacking in the current IAR-330 fleet. Furthermore, the integration of the H-Force weapon management system allows this helicopter to transform from a mere air truck into a lethal attack platform, capable of firing guided or unguided munitions, making it a versatile asset highly needed on the modern battlefield. This Romanian decision cannot be separated from the geopolitical context and the safe financing scheme itself. With access to over 16 billion euros and in low-interest funding, where two-thirds is dedicated to military equipment, Romania is bound by rules that prioritize European industrial cooperation. This effectively narrows the maneuvering space for non-European competitors, specifically Lockheed Martin with the Black Hawk helicopter produced in neighboring Poland by PZL Mielek. Although the Black Hawk is a formidable competitor and has a strong regional logistics base, SAFE's emphasis on European supply chains places Airbus in a superior position. However, this brings its own risks. Relying on European supply chains means Romania must queue behind other customers who have ordered earlier, such as Hungary which already operates 16 H225M units. The reality of defense industrial production today involves long waiting times. With critical components like saffron engines and rotor blades produced in France, the typical lead time between contract fining and first unit delivery can reach three years. This places Romania in a very precarious position, because every month of negotiation delay means one more month their aging fleet must be forced to fly beyond its safety limits. If the contract really can only be finalized in May, then the first units will likely only arrive in the hands of Romanian pilots nearing the end of the decade a dangerous time gap considering the unstable geopolitical condition of the region. Therefore, the inclusion of the H-225M in the safe list is a double-edged sword. It guarantees funding and top-tier technology, but it also exposes Romania to the complexities of European bureaucracy and long global production queues. Ultimately, this decision reflects a shift in defense priorities in Eastern Europe where combat performance and interoperability with NATO standards are beginning to displace local industrial protectionism. Romania has chosen a difficult policy, acknowledging that domestic factories are not yet capable of producing the top-level war machines needed by its soldiers, and choosing to buy from abroad for the sake of safety and mission effectiveness. The H-225M Caracal will bring a significant capability leap transforming the Romanian Air Force from an operator of the Cold War era helicopters into a modern force to be reckoned with. But the biggest challenge now lies not in the choice of aircraft, but in contract execution and time management, before the old fleet completely ceases to operate. So, what do you think about the news above? Let me know!